Uh, let's go to the hotline. Great to catch up with a guy whose work we have admired behind the wheel for a long time. Blake Fees uh, is back in NASCAR racing, and that's a good thing. Welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks, guys. I'm, uh, I'm much better than I was a couple of months ago. <laughs> I can tell you that. I think the last time you and I talked, you were, uh, you were pretty darn frustrated at how you got off to a great start with Hendrick several years ago. A lot of wins in outlaw sprint cars. Very tough league to do this in. And you've had to kind of park your aspirations for a while, haven't you? Yeah, it, uh, the, I felt like, you know, the, the, the rug just kind of got pulled out there. And, and uh, that's that's just what happened. I had to learn how to deal with it. And um, I felt like I, we had just gotten started uh, with the at the Hendrick deal when that program came to an end. And I, I really felt like I could drive stock cars. And I felt like... Um, that's where I, I wanted to be, and and during that time, I, I was two years removed from the sprint car world, and there weren't a lot of rides there. So I vowed to stay here and and um, work as hard as I could to get a second opportunity. And and if I had to, if that meant losing everything, then that meant losing everything. And uh, it was about to be the dumbest decision that I've made, and in the last six months. Um, some some great people got behind me. Uh, Mr. Turner gave me an opportunity uh, for for races in in this 32 truck later this year, kind of second half of the season, and and we'll finally get some consecutive runs in, which I haven't had. So um, things are looking up. Blake, we've seen you run pretty good uh, in, in the trucks before. I mean, I, well, you got a 12th place finish, something like that. But my question for you is, and I talk to a lot of the young folks that, that that are in the sport, and you certainly fit into that category of the the folks that that are used to winning races and are used to running up front and, and running well, and you step over to something totally different, and it's a struggle. You can't get that. You can't do what you were doing uh, in the outlaw cars. You can't do what you may have been doing in some other form of racing, and you don't have but a short time to prove yourself. Just how daggone tough is that uh, on you uh, mentally to, to try to make that happen? I, uh, I, in my early twenties, uh, it was it was tough, and since you know the last few years of struggling and, and not knowing if I was ever going to race again, uh, not knowing if I'd be able to do things like this, you know, on a on a Thursday afternoon, uh, I have a different approach now. I guess once you fail, uh, you're not scared of it anymore. You know, uh, a few years ago, I was really scared of it, and now. You see, okay, you've, it, it happened, and you, and you go on with it. Um, in the sprint cars, I had time because I was young, and I was driving for people. I was driving for my mom and dad's race car, and the pressure wasn't there. Here, uh, with the money on the line and, and you know, the number of drivers that, that want to do it or, or trying to do it, the window is very narrow, and what I found when I first came down here um if your if your car is off, you can't overdrive it and compensate for it like sometimes in a sprint car. I found out I figured out I was doing that, and then uh, the last few years going to races and and standing on the spotter stand and watching and listening to these guys, uh, I realized you, you have to have a more of a patient take what the car will give you type mindset where the sprint car is you're always attacking and and even if you're off you just you just power through it and keep driving harder and with these cars you know they can only take so much something's got to give and and tearing stuff up's not not the thing to do blake feast with us on the hotline gets back into a car a race car at this level in the truck series with turner motorsports pretty soon second race in nashville and blake for those who don't remember the story a few years ago another guy i've gotten to know pretty well you and boston reed as i recall were sharing a car essentially at hendrick in the driver development program and, and and we're you know we love Hendrick Motorsports. Uh, they're not the only team that had to, for financial reasons, kind of step away from the driver development thing. But it left you and Boston kind of hanging. He's not racing at the moment, or probably that he's probably done. A guy with as good credentials as you had. So talk a little about that experience. Well, it uh, when I the, the Jeff Shepard, Paul McMahon, and Dan Lasowski were about law. The sprint car drivers took me aside and said, you need to go to Charlotte. And owners are looking for young guys to drive their race cars. And at the time, they were. Um, and and they were kind of searching. So I started driving down here. It took about a year or two. 
and we won the World of Outlaw show right uh, here in Charlotte, and that led to meeting Mr. Hendrick, and he didn't have anything, and he said, stay in touch with me. So I called him about every week, and and I never got a hold of him, but I just called him and left messages and kept calling because I just figured, you know, that's what you had to do. And uh, finally, Bobby Gerhardt had a broken leg, and... Um, we had a meeting at Hendrick, and, and they decided, okay, we're going to take you and, and get with Gerhardt's team to Nashville, the ARCA race, and we're not going to put anything on it. Because, uh, you know, I was I had one race in a stock car. I'd been on pavement, uh, you know, once or twice. I was a wing sprint car dirt guy, and they didn't know if I was going to be embarrassing or, or any good. So they didn't put anything but a number on that car. And uh, we went to Nashville. We were able to qualify third and win the race. And then that kind of got the whole driver development thing going over there. And then um, in 05, everything struggled, and, and at the end of the year, that ended. And really a lot of driver development things ended in that time. And then we saw this new wave of sponsorship um, kind of playing the lead role in whether you get an opportunity or not. And so I had to go back and refocus and figure out, you know, how do you do it? Used to, you could do it based on if you won here or you won there, or uh, but I had to go back and build relationships and and uh, I just kept going. If if there was a racetrack within nine hours, I drove to it and would stay on people's couches and hotel room floors and and uh, it, you know it's frustrating and you felt like you weren't making any ground. But I knew that if I was out of sight, I was out of mind and and. You know, an unemployed race car driver walking through the garage isn't attractive to owners, but if you're not there, I think it's even worse. So it felt like, you know, you you just couldn't win. And then, um, the, uh, you know, luckily I'm not capable of doing anything else. So <laughs> there was... <laughs> Uh, I, I tried and I failed miserably at, at everything else. So I said, okay, I know this racing thing. I need to stick to it. And uh, every time I got close to giving up, uh, something pulled me back in. I'd get a ride in sprint cars or, or ARCA or something. And it just seemed like every time I was ready to hang hang up or just couldn't take another step, uh, something pulled me back in. And uh, luckily, this year we, we have the opportunity with uh, Turner Motorsports and I'm really excited about it. Well, let me ask you this question, and, and and we know that you're going to be driving over at Turner Motorsports. What, what do you do between now and then? I, I mean, are you one of the guys? Do you come down? Do you hang out at the shop? Do you help work on the truck? Or, or you you pretty much said just a few minutes ago uh, you didn't do much of anything else. Now, I don't know. Does that mean work on the truck, or does that mean anything other than racing? Well, I, I try to do all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm in the Charlotte infield right now, supposed to be working for the Rich and Petty driving experience. And I was giving rides, and I say, hey, i gotta, I got to jump out for a second. So uh, when I'm done here, I'll go back and finish out the day doing that. Um, last week I was in Nashville all, all weekend learning what adjustments they were making to the trucks, what, the, what Brad Sweet and Carmichael and, and James were saying, um, you know, building a re- relationship with the crew chiefs and trying to learn as much as I can. During the week, I uh, spent time with the marketing guys in the shop because uh, we do need to, um, like everybody else, I know it's an old saying, but, uh, it's a, you know, it's a matter of fact, we've got to sell some sponsorship um, for these races, and, and hopefully um, we can find a marketing partner that will want to be a part of it and, and can uh, we can move forward into next year with them. So a lot of marketing, I'm trying to learn. I'm, I'm doing the, uh, the petty thing, and and uh, I kind of just run around with my hair on fire most wow. of the time. Wow, wow. So, and I was reading over the press release, knowing it was you and, and being very excited for you that you're getting this kind of second opportunity here to do this, uh, maybe a little later in life than a lot of people would want to see, uh, you know, in an ideal world. You're 29 now. You're not 20 uh, and we just have been talking today about Trevor Bain, who wins the Daytona 500, just you know, at age 20. Uh, it, it, it's a different world. You didn't have to bring a sponsor or or rent the ride or anything like that, though, right? I had some. I when I looked at everything, I knew I was going to have to have some guys behind me, either a sponsor or something. And we were able to get uh, a couple silent investors uh, together to to help 
kind of create an opportunity. And, and the rest was an opportunity uh, from Mr. Turner. And, and a shot to, uh, to, to try to get me out there, prove something, uh, hopefully attract uh, some sponsors and, and be able to move forward and, and keep racing. I don't want to be on the sideline again. And I'm not 20, uh, but I w- with losing everything, not knowing you know, if you're going to race ever again, I'm in a better position now um, than I was when I was 22 or 23. And um, I feel like I can handle everything better, whatever comes our way. And, and uh, I think I'm just ready for it now. Good deal. All right. Well, listen, we're thrilled for you that you're getting another opportunity to do this. You've clawed your way back into the opportunity and just hope it goes well for you. Start, now you'll run Nashville. How, is, is, what are we talking, seven, eight, ten races? What do you think? I think we're thinking somewhere around the 10, 10 mark. Uh, they're still working on the schedule. It's to be determined. I know that the first one is Nashville, July 22nd. And uh, hopefully we can go have a good run. We won the Arca race there, and uh, we ran for Billy Ballou there and, uh, a couple years ago. I uh, got to drive for Mr. Sadler out of Nashville. So, um, so far the high points of, of this career, I guess, have kind of all centered around Nashville. So yeah. hopefully we can um, hop back in that thing and go have a good run on uh, there in July. All right, good deal. Congratulations on getting the deal together. We wish you well. Know you can get the job done, and you'll be in good stuff. So uh, this is this should be a good opportunity for you. It will be. Thank you, guys. I enjoyed talking to you. All right, Blake, yeah, anytime. Appreciate having you on the show, Blake.